Hey, welcome to Short Church, episode eight. Let me ask you a question. Have you lost your boldness? Have you lost your confidence? Now, maybe initially I asked that question, you're like, no, I'm still pretty confident, pretty bold, but are you making bold plans? Are you making confident preparations for your future and for the day that's ahead of you? For instance, you're watching this, maybe at night, maybe in the morning, whatever part of the day you're watching Short Church episode eight, are you making bold plans for the rest of your evening? Are you making confident plans for the rest of your day? I would simply suggest that because of recent events globally, some of us have lost those bold plans. Of course, the scripture says man plans his way, the Lord directs his steps, which seems to insinuate that, hey, we're to make bold plans and then God will guide us each step of the way. And there's another scripture that says, don't cast away your boldness or don't get rid of your confidence or don't set down your confidence because it actually yields incredible results in your life. Have you set aside your confidence? Have you kind of put boldness on the shelf thinking, hey, global pandemic, a lot going on, not really gonna make bold plans, I'm just gonna get through the day. Come on, the difference between thriving and surviving. This episode of Short Church, number eight, is dedicated to more than just getting through the day. God wants you to have a rich, full, and satisfying life. That's what he says in John chapter 10, right after he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He says, there is a thief, there's an enemy, there's an op opposition to your life. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life in abundance, rich, full, and satisfying life. Translation, God wants you to have a full and satisfying day, or maybe it's your evening, or maybe it's your morning. Come on, God wants you to have a rich, full, satisfying morning. God wants you to have a rich, full, satisfying evening. Let us, you and me together, commit to making bold, courageous plans. What gives you and me the right to be bold and confident as we plan prepare and experience this particular day. Well, here's my reply. It's this, Jesus is the door. He is the pathway. He is the point of all life. And when we access him, we access his promises in John chapter 10, which is life and life more abundantly. Again, right before that, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Nobody gets to God except through me, for I am God. Jesus is the pathway to life. Jesus is the pathway to satisfaction. Jesus is the pathway to fulfillment. Now, those sound grandiose and large and magnanimous and amazing, but in reality, it actually means Jesus is the pathway to a restful, peaceful, fulfilling evening and afternoon for you. Here are three facts about Jesus being the door that I think will free you up and reinvigorate you to take boldness off the shelf, to take confidence off the back burner and bring it back to the forefront and say, I'm gonna have a great day. I'm gonna have a great afternoon. I am going to have a rich, full and satisfying evening. Here it is, Jesus is the door. What does that mean? Number one, the door is free. It's free, the doorway, the pathway to purpose, the pathway to forgiveness, the pathway to relationship with God is free through the person of Jesus. You can't earn it or deserve it. Jesus is the gate, the door, he says in John 14, to all of the sheep. And you can't earn that or deserve that, you simply receive that. Jesus is the doorway to fulfillment. Jesus is the doorway to satisfaction. Jesus is the doorway to the forgiveness of all the error and the wrong that you and I have committed. You know what Jesus is the pathway to? He's the pathway from shame into confidence, boldness, and fulfillment. Do you struggle with shame? The Bible says there is now therefore no shame, no condemnation for those who have received the free gift of Jesus. Yes, Jesus is the door and the doorway is open, unlocked, and it's free. He has unlocked the door, so make bold plans make confident determinations in your given day for Jesus is your doorway and the doorway is not locked. A friend of mine texted me that just recently, a few weeks ago. He texted me, he said, Jesus is the door and the door isn't locked. And I kind of stepped back from my phone and I thought, how profound is that? He's the door and it's not locked, which is to say, 
it's free. You can walk in and out. Jesus says, I'm the gate of the sheep, and you can freely come in and out. It's free. It's free. You can move in forgiveness and confidence because of what Jesus has done. The Bible says he became sin so that you and I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not only is it free, it's fixed. The door is fixed open. The door is propped open. You ever had one of those doors that like it closes really easily, it locks up real fast and you're always like, ah, I gotta unlock it. So you open it up and you put one of those little stoppers and it keeps the door open. I want you to see that right now when it comes to your relationship with God, the creator of heaven and earth. He is the doorway and the door is fixed open, which is to say your poor afternoon or evening, the dumb decisions we make on a given day, God does not shut the door, block us off and keep us out of relationship. When God gets upset at you, he doesn't block you and unfollow you. His door remains open. His heart is open to you. I wrote a poem years ago on my, well, years ago, a couple years ago when I turned 40 to Chelsea and I told her, my heart will always be open to you. My heart will always, that's the goal of relationship. God's heart is always open to you. Do you know, are you broken? Are you hurting? Do you feel like you've made a string of poor decisions? God's heart is open to you. His door is open. He's ready to meet with you. He's ready to connect with you. He's ready to communicate with you. And lastly, the door is Jesus. It's free, it's fixed, and it's for everyone. I wanna remind you and I wanna encourage you in the same way I cannot keep you from access to God, you cannot keep anyone else from access to God. I know it's so funny, sometimes we pretend like we're the gatekeepers for God. We're God's gatekeepers and we determine who's in and who's out. We determine whose morals are good enough, whose lifestyle's good enough, who doesn't smoke, who doesn't cuss, and they're in and they're out. No, the truth is God is the gatekeeper and that door is open to everyone. This is the message of Jesus. No matter the differences that we have in the world, whether they're ethnic differences, whether they're cultural differences, whether there's background differences, whether there's philosophical differences, when we come to Jesus, the door is open for everyone and we can't keep anyone out. May that be an encouragement to you. Hey, if you're watching this right now and you're going, man, my grandma told me that I, there's no way I could ever follow Jesus. You know, my uncle said that I'm definitely going to hell. I got good news. Your grandmother and your uncle are not the gatekeepers for God. Jesus is, and the door is wide open, and you are loved, you are forgiven, you are accepted, and you are His. Now, with those facts in mind, let us make bold and confident plans for the rest of our day and in truth, the rest of our life. I hope that's an encouragement to you on Short Church, Episode 8.